Hey everybody, welcome back to Whistle Thicket. We do a lot of stuff here, but one of my favorite things to do is beekeeping. That's right, beekeeping. Okay, we are making bee candy, sugar candy, bee cakes, sugar cakes. There's a couple names for them. It is food for your bees for the winter time. Now this is a backup. You should always, always leave plenty of, sh of honey for your bees, right? That's why bees make honey so that they can get through the winter, right? So you should always leave as much honey as possible. For me, I do a deep and then a medium, and that whole medium is honey for the bees. And here's the bee flying around. Um, if you hear some noise in the background, we got some uh, ditch digging going on on the farm here, so uh, you may hear some uh, equipment in the background. So right around about 50 degrees, you need to switch from bee um, um, sugar syrup, which is a two to one mixture of sugar and water to bee candy. And I'm gonna show you my recipe plus a secret ingredient that you may not know about. So I got five pounds of sugar here and for every pound, you only need one ounce of water. That is not a lot of water. That's about two thirds of a cup for five pounds or so. Um, this is important. You don't want to overdo the water because in the winter, the bees have to, it's the same process as, as um, nectar. They have to take away the moisture from the nectar to make the honey. They had to do something similar with sugar water and they want to get as much moisture out of it as possible so they can use it as a food source. And if you put too much water in, it's going to be a little more difficult for your bees to access the actual sugar. So even though you're going to be tempted to add more water, don't. It's going to be mainly a sugar mixture with a little bit of water plus my secret ingredient. Um, so I'm going to mix it in these um, bowls up front and then I'm going to put them in these pans and I have parchment paper here. That is just so I can uh, pop the sugar cakes out. So let's go ahead and uh, start mixing and then I'm gonna show you the secret ingredient. Okay, so I'm still mixing up my bee candy. I'm about to put it in my pans and then you got to let it dry for at least 24 hours to harden. Um, you can even put it in your oven on really low, really, really low. Um, but I'm going to have to wait about 24 hours for uh, my sugar cakes to set. But here's my secret ingredient, people. Vinegar, just a little bit of vinegar. Let me see. I'm putting just about an ounce in for five pounds of uh, sugar. So this vinegar is going to help, um, I guess, inhibit, prohibit bacteria. So this is real important. It's gonna keep the sugar candy lasting longer for the bees, just a small amount. Um, and this is gonna really keep the bacteria at bay. So I'm gonna add my vinegar here just a little bit, mix it in, and then we're going to put them in the pan and we're gonna wait 24 hours and then we can use our bee cakes.
Okay, so our um, sugar cakes are all nice and dry for the most part, and they've dried overnight. And now I'm going to put them in my hives. It's getting close to dark, but you know, sometimes you gotta be keep when you can. And for me, it's in the afternoon. So this is real important. At the end of the little montage that you saw me with a spatula and I was making my little cakes, that's important to do before you let it dry. That's a crucial little step. And hopefully when I pop these um, I'm out of the pan with the parchment paper, I'll have nice little bee cakes. But that's a really crucial, crucial step is go ahead and make your cake sections before you let it dry because if not you'll have just one giant piece of sugar right and i guess you could do that you could just have one big piece um but i'm going to use this for a couple hives at a time and i may make more in the winter um so let's go ahead and uh share this sugar with the bees Okay, so we are in the bee yard and we are gonna add our sugar candy. I do have a quilt box or two that I'm going to be using, but I still need to build some more. I got a video on quilt boxes if you wanna learn more about them. So right now I'm just gonna be using shims. I'm not really doing an inspection. I'm just throwing on the sugar candy, making sure my bees are there, and then throwing on the sugar candy. And if I get a warm day in the next couple weeks, I might do, um, a half decent inspection but right now it's getting late in the day so i'm just going to give them some extra sugar and uh at least i know that they have a backup plan if they use their honey this winter so let's go ahead and uh feed the bees We are in the bee yard today. It's November, almost Thanksgiving, and I'm doing some winter prep. I've made some bee candy right here, and I made a video about that. If you wanna know my bee candy recipe, check out that video. Um, but I'm talking about quilt boxes. So what is a quilt box? So first let's talk about bees. Bees did not evolve in a cold climate, right? They are not native to America. They evolved in a pretty moderate temperate climate and actually they aren't great with winters right so we have to do some extra support to help bees get through winter there's two things that are going to kill your bees in the winter right three things if you count mites but hopefully if your bees have made it to thanksgiving hopefully you got past the mites and you treated and your bees are happy but now you got to worry about the cold and you got to worry about moisture my first year of beekeeping i lost two hives and i started with two hives so my first year of beekeeping my hives failed one i lost to mites in november the other hive i lost in february due to moisture there was water dripping down from the top of the hive box so right let's talk about how do bees stay warm in the winter time they can actually use their wing muscles I think they can even detach their wings from their muscles and they're able to vibrate those muscles and they're in a big cluster. That cluster is going to generate heat and that's going to keep the hive warm. But what happens, there's so much heat that it makes it its own little weather system inside the hive if you can, be if, if you can believe it or not. So that's going to turn water, um, water into water vapor it's going to go to the top of the hive right because warm air rises and then it's going to condense and it's going to 
drip down onto your bees. Now, moisture probably is even worse than cold. Cold, you can't do too much about. You can wrap your hives, but moisture will really, really kill your cluster. Just imagine if you're outside, if you're cold, you don't want to be cold and wet, right? In the wintertime, just not good. So I'm using a, a um, quilt box, and last winter I um, used several quilt boxes, and my hive made it through the winter. I'm not saying that's the only thing that helped them, but this really helped reduce the moisture. So this is a quilt box that I made for about 10 bucks. And no, I'm not a carpenter. No, I did not have any fancy cuts except for a miter cut here, a 45 angle. I am gonna do a video on how to uh, make this. It cost me about 10 bucks. But for right now, I'm just gonna explain how it works. So I actually added a shim on the bottom and that is so that I can put my sugar candy on the bottom and in the winter time if I have to do an inspection I'll lift this up and the sugar candy will be underneath so this is actually a winter feeder and a quilt box so there is a layer of um, I guess window screen here stapled and then I have these holes drilled throughout the box those are also on the inside those are covered with screen and stapled to keep varmints out and such and then you have a pretty decent layer of uh, shavings here, right? You can get these shavings at a pet store, a grocery store, um, a feed store for horses. Um, this is basically bedding material. So this is what happens in the wintertime. With a quilt box, the bees are still going to generate heat. The um, air is going to rise up with that water vapor. It's going to go through this window screen, right? Water is tiny. It's tiny little molecules, people. It's going to go through this window screen, and then it's going to go to the top of the box still, and then it's going to drip down, and it's going to be trapped by this bedding. So instead of the water dripping on my bees, it's going to be trapped in this quilt box. And then what happens? These holes, these holes are really important for a quilt box the water is going to get wicked away through these holes in wind. And when you um, check out your quilt box in the wintertime, it really should not be wet. It should be pretty dry overall. If it's a little damp, that's okay. But it should be pretty dry because it's a wicking mechanism. So this is my quilt box. I'm gonna put it on with some bee candy. I'm gonna show you uh, how it works again. And I probably will do a video um on how i make these it's it's pretty simple um again it cost me about 10 bucks this is a great way to keep moisture away from your bees a lot of northern beekeepers use these i'm in north carolina but i'm in the mountains and sometimes we can get a lot of snow a lot of rain especially in the winter time so i'm hoping to have a um, quilt box on all of my hives in the next few weeks. This is the first one I built, so I gotta build a few more. But let's put it on and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video.